This is the Television Enthusiast Podcast, The Weekly Set. Episode 22, recorded August 13th, 2015. Hello and welcome to the TV Enthusiast Podcast, The Weekly Set. I am your host, Tyson, and joining me today are Will... Hello. And Kat. Hi. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about some of the news we talked about last week was pretty much entirely about the news that's been coming out. There's a little bit more that's come out, so we're going to be talking about that. We're also going to catch up on what we've been watching the last couple weeks, um, and we'll discuss a few other things along the way. Uh, let's start with what we've been watching. So... Kat, you're still watching Once Upon a Time and Arrested Development. You're still uh, kind of catching up through those. Where are you on those right now? Well, um, I'm into the third season of Arrested Development, so probably within the next week or so I should make my way into fourth season. It's my first time getting into fourth season. <laughs> I was just about to ask you that, if you'd seen fourth season yet. Yeah, make sure when you go into fourth season that you go in kind of knowing that it takes a while for it all to kind of fit together. Sure. Yeah, that, I think that's good to know, because I think that's one reason why a lot of people were probably disappointed with it. Yeah. It, it gets, like, as it goes on, like, the running gags start, like, compiling and adding on top of each other, and it starts getting really good, but it takes a while for that to really, like, it feels like almost like the first, like, five or even more episodes are all, like, stage building. But yeah, it, it gets it gets much better. Um, How about Once Upon a Time? Where are you on that? Um, so I'm watching it completely out of order. I watched all the third season, and now I'm watching all of second season, and I think I should finish that up just in time to watch all of fourth season. It's happening in part because I didn't really think, like, I thought, oh, I'll just watch a couple of episodes, but then I watch them, and I'm like, oh, this is actually fun, I'll keep going, but I don't want to go back and start from the beginning, because I get cut off <laughs> in the plot lines then. So, I'm doing it out of order, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I did that with like Supernatural kind of where I watched like the third the third season first and then I went back and I watched the other two seasons and then I kind of just fall, you know, I followed it from where I started at the beginning of the third season and then like between breaks I w- in seasons I went back and watched the uh, the first two, so I kind of watch that out of order. <laughs> I did that with 24, I think. I think the first season of 24 that I really watched, where I watched, like, every episode, was, like, uh, it was either season three or season four, which was the one where they had, like, the family that were, like, kind of right. underground terrorist. That was kind of like the one. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that was, and I still think that's probably the best season. I really got hooked on that I mean... season. <laughs> yeah. I started 24 with season two, so, um. And then after that, I went back and we got the DVDs and we're watching like one disc at a time, basically. <laughs> uh, I, I remember that. I remember, I remember in those days, if you wanted to catch up on your show, you had to go to Blockbuster and rent the DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, Once Upon a Time. How many seasons are there in Once Upon a Time right now? There, What's... there are four that, um, Three of them are on Netflix, and I'm I'm partly watching them while I'm waiting for the fourth one to come to Netflix, which is going to at the end of August. And then the fifth okay. season starts up at the end of September. Okay. So in the future, we should probably have some more Once Upon a Time discussion since uh, you and Will both watch it. Yeah, we certainly <laughs> yeah. could. I mean, I well, think we it's could, a good show, but I feel like the most important thing to remember about it going in is, A, it's very disney and B, I think it um, has a family-oriented audience because I feel like they did kind of undercut a lot of their potential plot lines or give everything a really cheap, easy fix because they're this is being the kids. <laughs> yeah, it's a family soap opera. <laughs> yeah, this isn't like some dark, gritty thing, you know. Uh, but it has just enough good stuff. To make it entertaining. Especially, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Especially if you're a fan of these franchises in the first place, then like you can really get into it. Because oh, I'm sure. Pretty, yeah, yeah, I imagine if you're a fan of fairy tales, it must just be a dream come true getting to see all these characters interacting. I'm, I'm sure it's a total blast. So, no, and like my one of my favorite things they've done so far 
I, I think it'd be cool if the show took more of these kinds of risks, is they made Peter Pan evil and turned him into the villain for the first half of the season, and it was a lot of fun. It was. It was I was fun. like, the idea of making Captain Hook a good guy and Peter Pan the villain was like, it was like really interesting, and I did not expect them to go in that direction. It's kind of like they've done they've done that with some books. Uh, they did that with like Wicked, you know, based on a, a, um, a, a Wizard, of, Wizard Oz. of Oz, yeah. And and there were some other book ones that came out. I think there was one about like the the big bad wolf or something, and where they've done like these kind of like weird kind of reverse yeah. uh, perspective kind of thing. So yeah, that's. that's- that's well. I mean, that instance with Hook and Peter Pan. That's the only instance so far where the show has actually changed characters' alignments. They haven't really done that with any of it. In with with all the other characters so far, the good characters are still good, and the evil characters are still evil. Although the yeah, although, although the, they like to they like to question hero and villain all the time in ways that they don't always think right. But you know, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and I exactly. thought they, the um, the Wicked Witch of the West. I thought a lot of her material in the back half of the season was really great. And you can tell oh, yeah. Mater is just having a blast playing the game. Oh yeah, Re- Rebecca Mater was awesome in that season, and I was like, <laughs> yes. And, and you could t- you could tell that this is from the producers of Lost <laughs> because uh, they pull a lot of actors from Lost for this. Oh. <laughs> and, and it and it is also very heavy on the uh, flashback element, which is ripped directly from Lost as well. When they flash back to like the Enchanted Kingdom, constantly, so you could definitely tell. <laughs> I've been kind of running out of stuff to watch. Like I watch some TV by myself, and I watch some with my mom, and I watch some with my sister, and I watch some. Just kind of in different ways. And, and I hit a point where we were looking at our DVR and I had really nothing to watch with my mom. <laughs> and so we're like, what are we going to watch? So we started going through kind of our, you know, our back catalog of shows that we just hadn't watched yet on Netflix, you know, and we have some, you know, last season of The Killing and our stuff like that that we haven't watched. But we said, let's check out this Bloodline show. Um, that's like a Netflix original. And so we watched the first episode of that. Pretty good, pretty slow with a, a few kind of cool, like little funny moments that really make the characters more relatable. Uh, I can't really tell you too much about it right now. It's just, you know, first episode, first episode-itis, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You really kind of don't know exactly where it's going. Like you, I, you have the idea of the general where it's going, but you don't really understand the, the full motivations of characters and kind of the meanings of things yet. Um, but we also, we needed a comedy because for some reason, summer TV is just like really depressing fare. Have you guys noticed that? Yeah. It's really dark and depressing stuff. I mean, even if it's good stuff, it's stuff that's kind of good, but dark and depressing. Yeah. Where, where's the comedy? This yeah. Summer, there's like know? no comedies in the summer. So. We needed something a little bit lighter. And so we were going through kind of our Netflix thing looking and we're like, okay, we've, you know, we've watched Kimmy Schmidt. We've watched these other ones, you know, what's there? And I, and I saw that I had added to my list a while ago, don't trust the bee in apartment 23, uh, with, uh, Kristen Ritter, who's going to be playing Jessica Jones on, uh, in the new Netflix series. Um, and I'd heard kind of mixed things about it. Like I heard it was pretty good and it kind of, it, it, you know, James Vanderbeek's in it playing like this kind of comical version of himself in the same way that like, you know, Matt LeBlanc is in an episodes. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll check this out. Let's see what this is, you know, what this is like. I need something kind of on the funny side. I'm kind of surprised. Like I'm not sure if it's like, more ambitious than it's good, or if it is really good. I'm still kind of early in watching it, but it's doing some pretty kind of fun stuff. It's, 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 you know, going a little bit in the surreal direction that you'd see in something like Kimmy Schmidt or 30 Rock. Um, and I really like that. So I've been kind of enjoying it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of giving it a shot. I'm giving it a chance. There have been a few things where I'm like, that was a really cool idea. I don't know if it was that well executed. Or sometimes I'm like, I kind of think that's kind of funny, but I don't know if it really works between those characters. But I'm just kind of accepting it because it's 
You know, this is how comedies are, sitcoms are, as they oftentimes take a while to kind of find their footing and for the characters to kind of find their voices and their chemistry with each other. Uh, okay, I was watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, how far are you along now? I watch, I'm, I'm on episode 18 now, so I'm getting there. Um, what, what's I'm, happening? I'm now, because I don't, I don't know by number. <laughs> well, well, by now, by now the whole plot with Hydra has, has been mostly resolved. And now the plot has switched over to this other shield that mm-hmm. apparently, that, that apparently existed, exists now. Made up by people um, who don't trust Coulson, like Admiral um, Adama. Yeah, like Admiral Adama. <laughs> and Luke, and Luke. <laughs> called by his proper name. He's just no. Admiral Adama. <laughs> He's forever Admiral yeah. Adama. <laughs> and you know, which is and, funny considering how huge of a name of an actor he was way before uh, he did Battlestar. But now, like, he'll forever be Admiral Admiral uh, Adama to me. I think, yeah. Um, Edward James Olmos is the actor's name, and he has done a lot of great work well before Valstar Galactica. Anyway, anyway, so while that's going on, Skye is, lear- is learning more about her powers, and she has, and now she has an inhuman mentor. Which is the guy with no eyes who can teleport. Um, he pays Sky a visit, and, you know, and, and he gives her some insight into what's happening to her. And uh, then there's the point, like, at, from, from what I last saw, there's the point where, like, this new version of S.H.I.E.L.D. goes, goes to grab Sky, and she has, like, a major event with her powers, in which, she just sends a shock wave that just blows everything around her away. And then while everybody is still shook up from that, the teleporting no eyes guy comes and he whisks Sky away. Pro- to the to, magical uh, fairyland. To the magical fairyland. <laughs> and so that's kind of where I'm at right now. So what are your um, thoughts where you are right now? Um... I'm I'm liking it. I'm enjoying it. Um, the new shield, uh, the other shield, is like kind of a twist that I didn't see coming, and I'm interesting. I'm interested into seeing how that gets resolved because I like the fact that they're not exactly they're not exactly bad guys. They're not like villains. They believe what they're doing is right and for the greater good. So unlike Hydra who are obviously just out and out villains. There's like there's that ambiguity to these guys where you know you you can't just outright hate them. Um and then there's also like then there's also the issue with Sky and her newfound powers and getting involved with the inhumans and all that, which is also another angle that we're exploring that's interesting and that's new for the character. Um, so it looks, it, it looks like they're doing some interesting things and I'm re- I'm really looking forward to seeing how they play out. You only got what, about seven episodes left or six episodes left? About that, yeah. Okay. That'll be nice. We can actually talk about S.H.I.E.L.D. when it comes back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yay. Let's go a little off topic here, actually, because Will and I, uh, just when we were recording our, our Hannibal discussion afterwards, we started talking about... Uh, he had just seen the new Fantastic Four movie. Uh, uh, did he watch it, Cat? No, I just saw all the reviews. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm avoiding it myself. I just, I just, I'm not, never been a huge Fantastic Four fan anyways. But we were talking about how, uh, Fox keeps talking about how their negotiations are really starting to go through right now with Marvel for the X-Men TV series. And I heard somebody mention, if that is so, then Marvel has to be getting something out of the deal because why would Marvel agree to it? You know, because they they could make an X Men TV series and have the rights to it completely. They don't. Fox doesn't own the rights to the TV, so they could do that. Why why would Fox ha- or why would Marvel have any interest in doing that? And the point was brought up that Fantastic Four is a possibility. Sure. 
And after this movie bombed so bad... <laughs> I've read multiple articles talking about how um, fans feel like X-Men are starting to get neglected in the comics, and it's because Marvel has repeatedly stated, well, we're not seeing... We don't get any of the re revenue from the cinematic film, so, but whereas, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy is a hit, we get the revenue from that, and so, is, you know, and we can boost that with uh, creating more comics. So I think it's very clear that Marvel does feel to a degree agree that um, they, it's because they're not getting the revenue from the X-Men films that they don't really need to put as much effort into X-Men, whereas Fox would definitely see the benefit from that. So I think it makes perfectly logical sense why Fox would but, want to and Marvel wouldn't. Right. This also puts Fox in a great opportunity to get rid of a franchise that is not doing them any good <laughs> and using that as a, as a bartering chip. Um, for, oh. for for getting that X Men series. Now, here's the thing: is that when Will and I were talking, Fantastic getting Fantastic Four so much isn't about Fantastic Four because I can't imagine that Marvel's going to like race to put out another Fantastic Four movie after this. No, they're going to wait a while, you know, at least. But the big I think thing, what Marvel. I think what Marvel would do with the Fantastic Four property right now. Is they'll probably incorporate the characters in other MCU movies, you know, like. But not even necessarily the central characters. Not even necessarily right. the four of the Fantastic and Four. Four. That's what Will and I were talking about. Is like, they're you know, with Marvel doing Guardians of the Galaxy and them going into the galactic stuff now in the Marvel universe. As Will said, most of that is tied up in the rights with Fantastic Four. Yeah, um, the, so, I can. I think that does make it a logical, just from what I know, a logical reason for Fantastic Four to return, uh, join the MCU, just because they seem to have a ton of cosmic material that would better interact with the rest of the Marvel universe. Even more so than right. just the main characters themselves. Yeah, like right. X Men. X Men does very well standing on its own, but it does seem like Fantastic Four would benefit from that. Yeah. It does, yeah, very much. I mean, like, just think Fantastic Four right now, they have uh, Galactus and the Silver Surfer, which would be natural in the MCU. I mean, it would be natural to have those characters show up in a Guardians of the Galaxy film or something, you know. Um, that That's a pretty big one. Or if they want to, if they want to top, uh, uh, the, the next villain that's coming in Avengers, if they want to top that. <laughs> yeah, yeah they I mean, top we're that getting Galactus. Thanos and Apocalypse over the next few years, so it would be understandable if they'd want to do some of the bigger stuff from Fantastic Four. The question yeah. is, will Fox yeah. be willing to let Fantastic Four go? That's that's what I'm thinking, is is that I think Fox would to get the TV rights for X-Files. Or not X-Files, X-Men. <laughs> Fox, Fox already has the right steps. So. <laughs> I like that idea. I don't know if that's what would happen, but I like that idea. I think with the timeliness, with how people knew that Fantastic Four was in trouble before it came out, and how poorly it's it's you know worked out in the theaters, not just with critical reception, but with money, how little yeah. it's, there... it's bombed. There um, is a very interesting story behind the production of Fantastic Four in which this is awful mixture of corporate meddling, uh, Fox not really knowing what to do with the property, and also hiring a director who also doesn't really know what he's doing with the property. Um, so, <laughs> Seriously, it makes uh, me appreciate Brian Singer even more. <laughs> yeah. Um, Basically, it is a fascinating read. Apparently, apparently, right after filming wrap, Josh Trank sent an email to the cast and crew saying saying he was proud of the film, which was better than quote him ninety nine percent of comic book movies ever made. Oh, one, cast, one one cast member responded to the email with, "I don't think so." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. Well, and then I saw this stuff about Josh Trank, like, dissing the film. Yeah, then he went on Twitter the, right after the reviews came out, and he dissed the film. So, like, one minute he thinks it's the best film ever, and the next minute he 
it, it's a disgrace and he had a better film a year ago? I don't think so. So yeah, it's a, it's the timeliness of all of that alongside the recent, you know, comments about the negotiations with Marvel for X-Men for TV makes me yeah. think this is likely. I, I mean, this know, is the kind of rumors we started hearing before the Spider-Man thing happened, too. Right, yeah, I, I think it's likely. I think, I don't see why Fox would want to continue to hold on to these rights if they can't find a way to make them profitable. Either they're going to sell the rights back to Marvel, or they're just going to be stubborn and try again in a few years before the rights expire again. Um, but, you know, they gave it three shots to make this a profitable, successful franchise. They failed all three times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's move on from that then, and let's talk about the actual real kind of TV news that we do have. Um, last week we oh, talked about stuff coming out of the TCAs. I want and... to talk about this. Did you see the new promo picture for the Flash Cat? <laughs> Um, no. I saw a new promo where he was wearing his new suit, but I haven't seen this new promo picture. What is it? Uh, Flash Season 2 picture. Basically, basically, what I was talking about last, uh, last time, I was talking about they were bringing Jay Garrick into the show with this season, and I was talking about how in the comics Jay Garrick is actually the Flash from Earth 2, and they introduced the concept of the multiverse with this classic issue of The Flash, where The Flash met Jay Garrick for the first time. And then the CW released this promo image, and it is a recreation of the cover of that classic comic book. Ooh. Like, to a T. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a very famous comic book cover, and yeah, they directly copied it. I mean, you could... You could see where they laid stuff out. It was like, even to the point where, like, in some ways, it's not really that compelling of an image itself. Like, it doesn't look right with the live action, like imagery, but it's, it's to fit what was the original comic cover. Right. That's actually exactly. very cool. intentional. So that's got me pretty hyped for the next season of Flash. <laughs> it seems like it, it's, it's just total full blown fan service at this point. And I love it. <laughs> I'm not at all surprised to hear that. So let's talk about some of the other news coming out of TCA right now. So first up, NBC has commented on the whole Xena reboot rumor, and they're basically saying, yes, they are developing a Xena uh, reboot or continuation of some sort. Seems like it's more of a reboot um, from the way they're talking about, like right. reinterpreting the world or something. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I don't think they they're gonna want to cast Lucy Lawless as Z, Zena now, uh, as unfortunate well, like, as she, that is. I'm pretty sure she died in the series finale. Oh, yeah. So Maybe. Well, I I didn't get that. Part. But it's it's with Greek gods and, <laughs> and stuff, you know. There's there's no uh, that that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Okay, but the <laughs> it's like when the win, one of the Winchesters finale. dies in Supernatural. <laughs> but it was emotionally built around that death to come back and retcon it twenty years later would be kind of offensive. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to pet, put it past anybody though, but <sighs> this is most likely going to be a new actress playing a new version of Xena, so. They'll probably throw Xena in some other role. It'll be like, you know, some queen of some country that Xena takes over or something. She'll be like a mentor <laughs> to the yeah. new Xena. Why don't they just do another spin-off? Xena was a spin-off, so it could be a spin-off of Xena. I think it's the name. Xena as a name still has like this credibility right. to it. And I think that's what they want to pull off of. Uh... But, you know, there's not too much news on that. It's just basically that they're working on it. Yeah, it's still sure. produced by Sam Raimi and Robert Taper. So you know the usual people are going to have cameos. You know Bruce Campbell is going to get a cameo. You oh, know, maybe. Uh, it's an NBC version, <laughs> so I don't know if they're going to have as much control. Oh, maybe. I Who knows? But uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see uh, what they do with it. If they do, I mean, when they say they're working on it, they don't mean they're in production. They mean they're, like, hashing out ideas. So yeah. they're at a very early stage. This might not even go to script. It might not. Know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's way too early because this might not even go to script. Even if it does, 
even if it does go to script, even if it does go to pilot, it might not even get past pilot. So we don't. Yeah, there's a lot of steps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then in similar news, uh, HBO is in talks about doing a Deadwood movie. I know. I heard this. I was like, what? This what? was something that they were supposed to do years ago. That yeah. they had talked about doing like a mini series to kind of wrap up the storyline. Kind of like out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. Oh, yeah. I guess, I guess since, uh, what's his name from Justified? Oliphant, yeah. Yeah, too much. I guess since he's free again now, <laughs> maybe that's what they were waiting for. It was like, <laughs> oh. Of course, not Ian McShane's on Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> on the other side of the world, but... We need Oliphant and McShane to make a Deadwood movie work, you know? And if they film it at the same place, that's right near me, so... Maybe I can get a set visit if they do that. No, yes! HBO, are you listening? No, you're not? Okay. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so here's something else we've been talking about um, quite a bit in several podcasts in the last couple of weeks. Um... But it's now confirmed that Constantine will be showing up on Arrow. Yeah. Uh, played by Matt Ryan again from, you know, same actor who played him in the series. That he will be in the fifth episode. And they seem to be pushing towards the fact that he is going to be partially involved in the resurrection of Sarah. Oh, you know, okay. I wish they wouldn't reveal all these details. I've been trying so yeah. hard to avoid pretty much any information about Arrow because I, I want to go into the new season fresh. But man, everyone is just releasing so much information these days. I wish I wish <laughs> I didn't know that already. Well, you yeah. know she's coming back. So I knew I mean, she was no coming back, but that. I didn't want to know. We don't want to know I don't want to know the details yet. I want to experience it with the show, you know? But it's anyway. interesting. It is interesting that yeah, they they they're getting Constantine on Arrow now. Um, they've been talking about some sort of crossover for a long time now. Stephen Amell even going so far as to saying if NBC renewed Constantine, he would show up in the second season of that as the Green Arrow. What do you want to bet Stephen Amell was a big part of getting this appearance? For the character on Arrow. Oh, I'm sure. I think so, yeah. It's obvious Stephen Amell is a huge fan of that show. So so I think, I think this is all like Stephen Amell's doing, really. Well, and I think Um, he's a big fan of having all the DC components connected. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Also, next next up, uh, we're going to have a WWE star. Oh, please no. Please no. I tried to watch that video and I just went, this, I just don't get this at all. It's just not my thing. It was really He's going to be wrestling on SummerSlam, supposedly as the Green Arrow. I don't know. <laughs> In costume? <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, they're, oh, they were kind of like teasing. They were kind of teasing that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's cool that Ryan's going to be on the show. I don't have strong feelings about Constantine, though I'm sure it's disappointing for people who are fans of the show. It got canceled, and this is a nice little, oh, well, uh, we get to see the character one more time. But I, 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 at the same time, I don't know. I think I, I also, sometimes I could fall back in this kind of, okay, but Arrow can still stand on its own, right? Like, not every single episode right. is going to be dedicated to crossover events of some kind or setting up another series. I still want the show to be dedicated to its own storylines right, and characters. Sure. So I kind of but, just kind know, of go, ah, when I see this. For Constantine fans, though, this is kind of, this is, this is kind of a relief for them because this means that the character, that, that version of the character can live on through appearances in the Arrowverse, you know, and maybe even becoming a regular cast member on Legends of Tomorrow at some point. Um, they could certainly do, totally do that. Um, sure. So, so that so that's kind of cool when you think about it like that. 
It's only one episode confirmed so far on it, so it's not like oh, it's gonna have okay, a mark. But leave it right. at that, okay? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I just want Arrow to be able to exist on its own. I don't want it to constantly having to be to exist too. And now we're setting up another TV series, and now we're having another crossover event. Like I think they're fun, right. but the connection the... to Flash wasn't the problem with Arrow's last season. Though. No, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. No, I mean, but I, I suspect we have different issues with the third season of Arrow because I still there's still a great deal I love about Arrow's third season and I think it gets way more crap than it deserves. I, 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 mean, I, I, I like agree, these. but I'm trying to say that like the the real issues with Arrow's third season I think are largely tied up in kind of the overly forced relationship between Felicity and Oliver. No, um, that's the fair. focus on that. The kind of somewhat mishandling of Ra's al Ghul. I actually thought uh, they handled complete... the Ra's. I thought Ra's al Ghul I think was they fantastic. Him I they thought they came, um, they came I back from the mid season and they started handling bad. Anyway, <laughs> but um, sense, just so yeah. long as the show doesn't become overwhelmed by this, I think that's a fair point. That like the 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 flash crossovers were not a problem for Arrow. I think they were. A lot of it was kind of awkwardly shoehorned in for both series at the very end that didn't make a whole lot of sense. But outside of that, I thought it was fine. I just. I, a part of me, it's just kind of, it's still, it kind of shrinks in despair because I don't want Arrow to lose its identity in the face of becoming, of needing to become, I don't know, part of the, of the larger whole. I don't know if I'm making very much sense. Anyway, uh, hopefully well, fourth season will really... assuage all my fears. But I, I think it's kind of cool that they're doing like, they're, they're treating it like a cohesive universe, or at least trying to do that, um, so that it feels natural, like, you know, like, like, if the Flash shows up, it's not some major crossover, it's just, like, natural, because they're in that, the same space, you know what I mean? Uh Um, you know, I mean, kind of like that, but Arrow should definitely be about Arrow stuff. It shouldn't be completely taken over by other stuff. And I get get that too. Let's get moving on though, because we're running kind of long here. And we can um, talk about Arrow all to go night. Through. Yeah, we have a lot to go through still, so let's kind of push past that right now. Um, also at the CW, this will be really short. Uh, they're talking about doing a Friday the Thirteenth series. Not, not the one that Will loves. Not the, not the one about the, um, art, art, artifact antique dealers or whatever, but the, the one about Jason Voorhees, the movie series, bringing it to a TV series. Um, I think I'm more and more starting to think that these kind of like horror properties that you normally wouldn't think would work well on TV shows can work well on TV shows. So I'm more and more thinking that. That being said, some of the wording they're using, like a more grounded Friday the 13th, makes me go like, uh, not really the right direction. <laughs> they should be going less grounded. Because <laughs> that's where Friday the 13th excels, you know? Um, right. They should be going all out, like full on Friday the 13th style, instead of trying to make it more grounded, you know? But it's... Uh, kind of fascinating that this is going to be considered as a TV series now. <laughs> it, it is kind of fascinating that they're doing a fright. I'm still wondering how that's going to work out. Scream has like the mis- like I said, the uh, Scream has the mystery element of not knowing who the killer is. This does not. We all know who Jason Voorhees is, and it's the killer is Jason Voorhees, mm-hmm. not anybody else. Uh, unless it's Friday the Thirteenth Part Part Six, where it was like some random guy dressed up as Jason, but <laughs> because the actual Jason was killed in the previous film, but <laughs> but yeah, so I'm not sure how they're gonna play this into a series, uh, a movie where which is essentially two hours of random teenagers getting killed. But getting killed by an insane hillbilly. <laughs> well, in you know Friday Thirteenth, he's not so much a hillbilly, but like a zombie. Well, he's, I, he's I'm a, hoping they don't turn him into a hillbilly instead. He's a zombie from he's a zombie from part seven on when they when they resurrect him from the dead. 
Well, but he was resurrected in the first five. place because he was dead before the first movie. He's come uh, back like in the first first yeah. movie was about his mom taking revenge right, right, because yeah, he died because, as a boy. Because he died there's like some debate over that, like whether he actually died or if he was just or if he actually survived that and just ended up handicapped and living in the woods. <laughs> I don't know. I'm you know, that part's unclear to me, but yeah, he doesn't like become full on zombie mode Jason until part seven. That's the only thing that's clear to me. <laughs> um, let's move on from that then. Uh here's some news that is kinda interesting for things we we've talked about before. We've talked about we were just talking earlier in this podcast about the flashback mechanic being used in Once Upon a Time. Here's another show that that hasn't really dabbled too much in the flashback mechanic, but is now doing it more and more. Last season, they had a single flashback. This season, it looks like they're having a few. Uh, young Ned Stark has been cast for Game of Thrones. And I don't even know, like, I'm not sure where this is going or why we are seeing a 13-year-old Ned Stark. Um, it, so this isn't from the books at all. Well, there's there's some stuff they could be touching on from the books. They could be touching on... There's some stuff kind of referred to, like with, uh, you know, Ned Stark and, and, um, Littlefinger and Ned's brother, who was originally supposed to be Catelyn's husband. And True. that would kind of be a right around that age point, I think. Um, or, or it could be like Ned's time in the Eerie with, with Robert Baratheon when they kind of became like brothers almost. Um, so it could be like that. I don't know if uh, any of that happened when he was 13. I mean... That seemed this, to be around that point. This it's is definitely this, not... It's definitely not the Robert's Rebellion. Yeah, Robert's Rebellion is, older than that. Okay, <laughs> yeah, this is... Yeah, this is definitely not Robert's Rebellion. This is definitely not the War of the Mad King. So we're going even before that, which is kind of interesting. I'm wondering what's worth exploring before that with Ned Stark. I don't know. I think it's probably going to end up having to do with Littlefinger. Because Littlefinger did know the Starks and did have a connection to Catelyn. And no, if somebody's true. having a flashback, it has to, there has to be somebody there from the flashback, <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> right? You would think. It's just a random flashback. Yeah, they're not just going to have some random scene that took place in the past. They have to have somebody there re- recalling it, you know, basically. Right, yeah. Like, yeah, so it's probably going to be Littlefinger since he's the only person around... Who could have possibly known Ned Stark when he was 13? Yeah. I, so I think that's what it's going to be. I think it's going to be about when Littlefinger challenged, um, Ned's brother to a duel, um, to like kind of his way of trying to like impress Tad or something. And it failed miserably and it basically set up Littlefinger's turn in his character. And I think that's probably what they're going to explore. They'll probably have Littlefinger do something drastic this season and they're going to use that kind of to show you his motivations. Right. True. That's, that's a good uh, read on it, actually. So here's some sad news related to HBO. It looks like David Fincher is off of the HBO series Utopia, which was based on um, a British series that's actually very oh, good. Oh, yeah, that's what you were talking about, Utopia, before. I remember now. I was yeah, really but... excited for to have him involved in this remake on it, and now he's off of it. HBO's uh, still, still holding on to the rights to it, so they might still continue it. All we yeah. know is, Fincher's is Fincher is off of it. Okay. Well, that's too bad. But... He's had two projects at HBO that both seem to be not doing too well. This was one of them. The other one is still kind of more, is kind of questionable about how it's doing. It seems like they're both, we're going over budget, and uh, I don't know. Looks like David Fincher might be trying to get too much money out of HBO for production. (laughs) Now, this isn't isn't a reality show, is it? No, no, this is based on the British series. There's a, there is an, there was an American series called Utopia. This, that was a reality show. This is, based on a British series. It's kind of a conspiracy about a like a graphic novel that somehow connects to some evil organization that like has some weird purpose and they're killing people and it's actually a really good series, the British series, which I heard is actually has a high likelihood that it's coming to Netflix in the next month or so. So that's gonna be one to check out. It's a really good sh- show. 
And like all British shows, you know, it's two season run is like shorter than a one season run of most shows <laughs> in America. Yeah. Right. Um, so we talked um, in the last podcast about how um, J. Michael Straczynski had said that he felt that it was likely that Sense8 was going to be renewed. Well, like the day after we recorded our podcast, <laughs> it was announced that Sensei was renewed for a second season. Um, it'd be kind of interesting if it wasn't, just because I think Netflix has given a second season to, like, everything they put out. <laughs> <laughs> Except for stuff that they've picked up for its last season. Like, you know, obviously, um, you know, The Killing didn't get a fifth season because it was just, they just wanted a fourth season to finish it off her. Um, besides that, Every show, like even even the ones that got like horrible ratings and didn't, we have no idea what the numbers are at Netflix. They don't release that, but I mean, like, um, there there's they've had shows that got horrible ratings and very little talked about, and even like Marco Polo, which was like super expensive and then didn't get great ratings. Even that show's getting a second season. Wow. So well, maybe they're wanting to give it long term chance, which is fair. Yeah. Um, Sense8 is, uh, I really like that show. Uh, you guys, and, and unless you've seen it recently, hadn't seen it yet. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that this is going to be a, an hour good season. I really ended up liking the first season. I think I mentioned it before, but I think that the real reason that Sense8 worked for me and for people that enjoyed it has less to do with the Wachowski siblings and more to do with, uh, German director Tom Teichmer, who, he directed two of the episodes. He directed the two best episodes. <laughs> and he, I think, really helped to ground kind of the more human element of the series, which I don't think the Wachowski siblings are necessarily all that good at. Um, and that's kind of where the show, that's where the strengths were for the show. So I'm, I'm hoping Tykvar is still involved for season two. Um, if he is, then. I'm sure it'll probably be just as good as season one. Well, that's um, good to hear. Here's uh, here's some other news that's kind of exciting. Uh, Tina Fey is teaming up with some former 30 Rock writers that she worked with at NBC for a new NBC series about a millennial and her mother. So that's kind of all we have on it. <laughs> there's yeah. like no more information. There's no title. There's nothing else. It's just that it's her and it's two other people um, from 30 Rock. And hey, it's Tina Fey, so... Hey, I I like 30 Rock. I love Kimmy Schmidt. So I'm I'm excited about this. Uh, You know, she might be playing the mother on this, which would be interesting. Uh, But who knows? I mean, she's got her regular cast of characters that we're sure we're going to see pop up in some role or another. (laughs) (laughs) And, And now we put the clock... And wait till NBC sells it to Netflix. Right. <laughs> like they did with Kimmy Schmidt. Right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. They'll say, I don't know if this is going to have any legs, and then it'll become like this huge iconic thing when Netflix picks it up. <laughs> yeah, right? Thank goodness Netflix is willing. <laughs> yeah, Netflix is killing it. They're just killing it. I mean, it's. I, I had a weird revelation a couple of days ago where I was going through and realizing that, like, Somebody had, like, asked me, you know, like, oh, you know, what's good to watch on Netflix? And I started naming off, like, just their original shows. And it's it's like I had completely forgotten that they have other shows on there as well. And, <laughs> and that's just, that's a testament to how much they're killing it with their originals. That, like, I just, it, it just completely slipped my mind to even consider, you know, other really good shows that are on Netflix, but they're not, you know, originals from Netflix. That that just didn't even occur to me. You know, right. in the same way that if somebody said, hey, I have HBO for the weekend. What am I going to watch? You wouldn't say like, oh, the new Transformers movie is on HBO or something. You'd say like, check out Game of Thrones, The Sopranos, you know. Right. Exactly. Um. So that kind of brings us to the end of the news topics that we're going to talk about. Uh, We have one kind of other short topic I want to go over before um the end of the podcast, and that is... uh. Um, I'm introducing a new, or well, introduced, that's already up, uh, the first one, a new feature series on uh, TV called uh, Spotlight. And it's going to be a regular series, and 
Uh, I'm going to try to do it weekly. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pull it off weekly. It'll be kind of like the podcast in that sense, or maybe it'll miss a week here and there. But it's not. that doesn't mean it's over. It just means we missed a week. But I decided it's a good opportunity for us to kind of look at some shows that are underwatched and kind of flown under the radar and kind of get, get a chance to really point out why they flew under the radar, why, they, why they're worth watching, um, things like that, you know? And I, I really kind of felt like this all came out of, for me, like I was thinking, I need to write something about Rectify because I was watching a new episode of the season and I was just kind of, it, it re-floored me on how good this show is and then how little it's talked about. And critics love the show, but like we're Hannibal... There's so many crazy things going on that they're always talking about it. Um, Rectify is such a slow burn series that it doesn't really create the fervor for discussion that something like uh, um, Hannibal would or that something like, you know, Game of Thrones does. You know, there isn't like, oh, this big event, everybody needs to talk about it. It doesn't really happen. And because of that, I feel that the show is kind of disserviced. It's kind of fallen by the wayside in a lot of publications um so this is going to be a new series that we're going to be doing the first one covers rectify and then after that we'll kind of bring up some other series and i'll write some and you know maybe cat and will write some as well um talking about some shows that flew under the radar sounds right. good sounds good yeah also on uh the radar coming up we have the upcoming 25th episode of the podcast this is episode 22 so in three weeks, we're going to be on our 25th. And I thought, you know, hey, maybe we'll do something kind of special for it. I'm, I'm not quite sure what yet. I'm, I'm thinking about reworking the intro music and changing some stuff there. Maybe I'll adjust some of the format a little bit about how we, how we, um, record it and stuff and try to figure out something that just a good opportunity to kind of polish it up a little there. Uh, but I was also thinking maybe we could do kind of an old segment we could bring back. I was thinking maybe we could do a show club or an Advocates of Great Television or something like that. Are any of those interesting to you guys? Oh, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Would you be more into interested in doing our show club or more interested in doing like Advocates? Well, now remind me what the show club entails. Show club was when we did with Twin Peaks. Oh, we, that's right. We, it's where we all watch. It's a series. bigger project that would take more time. Um, I think the advocates of great television would be better for me just because uh, I, as fun as it is to sit down and watch an entire series, it can be time consuming. Yeah. Especially with everything <laughs> else I'm trying to do. Right, exactly. Twin, Twin Peaks was actually like really difficult for me. Yeah. Um, Especially when they'd have like a sudden two hour episode in there. Then it's like, oh, now it's seven yeah, hours. And now it's, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, why did you do this to me? But, then, <laughs> but, but I ended up seeing a series I enjoyed. So that's good. But yeah, Advocate, the only problem for me with Advocates is I, I don't have anything to recommend. It's like, <laughs> It, 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 all the shows I really like, lots of other people, especially people participating on this website, also really like. So it's <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can set some strange rule, like the show has to be at least 10 years old or something. And, so and then that'll kind of force us cases, to go back. And maybe even oh, those geez. cases, then it could be shows that we've also watched, and it would be an opportunity for all of us to go back and re-experience an older show. Yeah, yeah right. Make, make me recommend... Make that too old, and I'll start recommending P and P on Nickelodeon. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it can be found streaming, that's fine. If that's what you right. want to recommend, right? So, yeah, let's we'll work something out with that. I didn't want to kind of hash out the whole thing on the podcast, but I just kind of wanted to drum up some kind of interest in what we might be doing. So, we're going to be doing something along those lines, uh, and yeah, we'll we'll do something kind of cool for the twenty fifth with that. So look out for that. Maybe we'll try to get somebody old back on here again. Maybe we can get Lee back or we can get uh, yeah. um, Ed on here again. That'd be great. Surprise, That'd be uh, really cool. What happened with Lee anyway? Lee just wasn't able to make it with the schedule. Oh, gotcha. She couldn't, she couldn't record this late. Uh, so yeah, she had, so it, it's, that was just the issue with Lee with there. So yeah, but. That's a shame. Um, but yeah. We'll try just, to figure something out with that, and that'll be, be kind of like cool, really, so I look forward to it. That'd be, like, really cool, yeah, just, like, go all out with it, you know? 
<laughs> I might I end up having that. to do it where I don't edit the audio tracks separately, and then we can get a few people on here. That just would be really do, cool. Just do the intro music. Like, instead of the normal intro music, just make it like the intro music to Twin Peaks. <laughs> and there you go. Straight back, <laughs> straight back to our roots. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that pretty much brings us, um, to an end of all of our topics. We have one show coming up next week. I, I like to point out the shows that are coming up next week at the end of the podcast. Uh, but we only have one coming up this week on, on this Sunday. Uh, Show Me a Hero is debuting on HBO. It's from, uh, the writer of The Wire, who's a really kind of famous writer. Been hearing really great things about this going through. Uh, every time I hear what the show's about, I forget. <laughs> Within moments, I'm just kind of going in knowing, hey, this is a David Simon show that's getting a lot of positive early attention. I, I think, I think, uh, I think HBO needs that now. HBO's been having a pretty bad year. You know, other than Game of Thrones, which is always, always does good for them. Even Game of Thrones has been getting them some bad press and stuff this yeah, last year. Did, yeah, this last, so HBO's been having a pretty bad year. True Detective uh, didn't live up to the expectations that people had set. Um, their newer shows haven't really taken off or gotten the critical reception that they would have liked. Um, so they 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 really need uh they they really need something to come out and be and be both a critical and ratings hit, and I think this could be it. So you guys going to check out Show Me a Hero? Um, I'm not even familiar with it. I'd have to look into it more. So that that brings us kind of to an end. We've wrapped up all of our topics. So thank you, everybody, for listening. You can check us out at tventhusiast.com. We have a YouTube channel. We post videos up on YouTube. Mostly right now we're doing our uh, Hannibal impressions, which you can check out. Um, They're also posted on the website, so you can link through them there. That's pretty much it for us. So, uh, thank you everybody for listening. Night. Night. Bye. If you would like to voice your opinion, send an email to the weekly set at tventhusiast.com. TV Enthusiast is a part of the Enthusiast Media Network. Stay tuned to TV Enthusiast and the Weekly Set Podcast for more coverage of.